The Dow Jones closing below 12,000 yesterday. It's the sixth straight week that it is closed in the red. So were President Obama's economic policies sending the country towards another financial collapse? Our next guest says that four principles from Reaganomics can stop the downward spiral. Peter Farrar is here, uh, was an advisor to President Reagan. He's also the author of this brand new book out June 14th, America's Ticking Bankruptcy Bomb. And Peter, thanks for coming in. Glad to be here. So it does seem like kind of leaving the Carter administration to the Reagan administration in reverse. Yes, this economy does have a raging economic boom inside it, straining to break out. In fact, the recovery is long overdue. Since the Great Depression previously, recessions on average have lasted 10 months. The longest previously was 16 months. Here we are 41 months after the recession right. started, and, we, and unemployment is still rising. This is the longest period of unemployment this high uh, since the Great Depression. And uh, also, historically, the stronger, the deeper the downturn, the stronger the recovery. But here, the recovery never got off the ground. So to get the economy booming, we need to, do need to go back to the four principles of what Reaganomics. Number one was cut tax rates to create incentives for production, job creation, uh, starting business, expanding business. So Reagan came in, the top tax rate was 70 percent. He reduced it all the way down to 28 percent with just one more rate of 15 percent for the middle class. Cut uh, government spending. Reagan came in, there was the famous, uh, notorious at the time, Reagan budget cuts. Uh, he cut spending. In fact, uh, even with the defense buildup that won the Cold War without firing a shot, if you look at the record, uh, during the Reagan years, uh, federal spending as a percent of GDP relative to the economy actually declined by 10 percent. So he actually reduced the size of government by 10 percent, even with the defense buildup. Point three is uh, 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 restrained. Well, there's deregulation is another point. Mm -hmm. We could cut uh, regulation to reduce costs to businesses and consumers. And the fourth point is a sound anti-inflation monetary po policy. During 1979-1980, inflation went up 25 percent in just two years. He cut inflation in half by 1982, wow. half again. Uh, because instead of uh, what they're doing now with this uh, uh, quantitative easing, you reduce the rate of growth of the money supply relative to monetary demand, and you use the, to maintain a stable dollar. Because when you have a stable dollar, that encourages investment. So, so you're making the argument essentially that, and you, with your intimate knowledge of, of Reagan's fiscal policies, that President Obama is doing the exact opposite of what occurred when Reagan was right. On each one of these things, if you go through what he's doing, uh, instead of cutting tax rates, he's raising tax rates. Already in current law, in 2013, the top tax rate of virtually every federal tax is going to go up. The top two income tax rates go up nearly 20 percent. The capital gains tax rate goes up nearly 60 percent. The uh, tax on corporate dividends would, near, it would nearly triple. This is already in current current law, uh, it, it, it'll go into effect in 2013, because you have the tax increases of Obamacare, expiration of the Bush tax cuts. Also, on the nation's small businesses, job creators and investors, the Medicare payroll tax is going to go up uh, by 62 percent. Man, uh, Peter, you're a good guest. Would yes. you come back? Uh, yes. His book? I would be glad. It's taking bankruptcy, bankruptcy big bomb. bomb. i got to read <laughs> that. Peter, thank you very much. Well, thank you for having Appreciate me on the show. It. Oh, hang around for this next story there, Peter. You'll like this. All right, I will. <laughs> oh, no. Is this bikini?